Welcome to the Propulsion Swimming Podcast, where we aim to give swimming the coverage and publicity it deserves. Every week, we celebrate the sport we love with amazing special guests and topics from around the swimming pool. And now, here are your hosts, Scott and Dan. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of the Propulsion Swimming Podcast. As always, I'm your host Scott and back with me this week is my good friend Dan. On this week's podcast, we are doing a British trials extravaganza. We are covering selection policy, we are covering able body Olympic qualifying times, we are covering Basically, we're going to run through every event at the British Selection Trials and also the Para International Invitational Meet, which is going on in Sheffield this week. So it's going to be a big podcast. Hopefully you can stick with us through it all. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to two weeks of really good British racing. But first of all, Dan, how are you? Yes, I'm very good. I'm very good. I'm actually, you've basically summed up really nicely. I'm really excited for the next week or so because we've got the best swimmers in the country racing against each other, whether that's able body or para swimmers. Um, really looking forward to it. And we're going to see who is going to be selected to go to this year's, uh, well, delayed Tokyo Olympics. Yeah. So if we take as an example kind of worldwide right now april is seeming like a really fast month for swimming there's been some really rapid times coming out of the russian championships i was watching the new zealand championships this morning mm, yeah. some fast times going on over there i know the tyr series is happening in america the swimming Japanese. is kicking back off again yeah i mean normally i would say that the fast times don't really happen in march april sort of time but i tell you what like you said the russians are doing very well the japanese also um, yes. I mean, there's a lot of trials going on right now. Um, so hopefully the British guys can uh, do just as well, if not better. That would be nice to see, wouldn't it? That would be. That would be. We've got some really big races to look forward to. There's some massive swimmers obviously attending this meet. It is the best of British. Yep. So let's kick things off. We're, we'll start with the selection policy because unlike previous years, it's not as straightforward as people would hopefully kind of expect, really. It's... It used to be in previous years, top two at trials were considered mm. to go. Yes, yeah. And that was basically it. If you hit the qualifying time for the Olympics and you finished top two at trials, you went. You were guaranteed, yeah. That's this, right. Yeah, exactly. This year's a little bit different. I would guess it's because of coronavirus that things have had to be shifted about a little bit, unfortunately. There are four swimmers who are already selected to go. Mm -hmm. And that's because they medalled at the World Championships in 2019. So you've got Adam Peaty, there's James Wilby, Luke Greenbank and Duncan Scott, who all qualified previously because of their individual performances at those 2019 championships, like I said. Now, right. the selection policy going forward, it's basically head coach's call, isn't it? I mean, you still have the you still have to be the top two. There are consideration times that they, the swimmers have to achieve, um, but reading it, it does look like there's a lot of strong sort of choosing is the discretion of the head GB coach, which I kind of disagree with a lot of. You know, mm. it just seems like I don't want to say it, but it seems like some sort of favoritism may but, be sort of brought in a bit. You know, I don't think it's showing favoritism. I think there's it opens you up to questions that don't yes. need to be asked. Yeah, yeah. Whereas the the, the um, obviously the virus has not helped things, but if you finish top two at trials, you go. And I always remember a story. I think it was an Australian backstroker. I think where she broke the world record in the semi final at Australian trials, but then in a final came third mm. and ended up not going to Olympics. That's how cutthroat it was. I kind of agree that's how it should be because you know trials should be about the pressure because that, mm. that's the pressure you're going to feel at Olympics. You know so. Um, I agree with that one, but the discretion is a little bit iffy for me. I'm not too happy about it. But I think it's it's it just a, it's a fail safe in case there's a swimmer who has been adversely affected by coronavirus, but mm. Team GB know they can do the job. So say, plucking out a name out of thin air, say Freya Anderson, the 200 freestyle, she has a shocker. Mm. Say, for example, but she, everyone knows she's our best bet in that event. She has a shocker yes. at trials. Say she gets DQ'd. Who knows? I yep. think it's a fail-safe to make sure that British Swimming have put all this money into keeping her training through the coronavirus in a bubble environment. 
they don't want that to all go to waste because of one tiny mistake. They want that fail safe that, oh, actually, yeah, she didn't do that well at trials, but she can be selected for us. They've just written that in there. I'm yes, not... I mean, well, yeah. I mean, there's consideration times to be hit, but mm. they, if the swimmers don't hit those times, there are actually four meets that they can uh, target afterwards if they don't yeah. hit those times. Um, so there's European champs, obviously, in middle of May sort of time in Budapest. There's a, um, the Glasgow International meet uh, at the end of May. And then there's two Mare Nostrum meets uh, at the start of June, which are in Cannes, which I think is in France, and then Barcelona as well. So they do have opportunities to to sort of make do, if that makes sense. So, um, yeah, this, this selection meet isn't the be-all and end-all. There no. are, if no one hits the time in that event, there will be more places up for grabs later on in the year. But saying that, there's only a certain number of swimmers that GB can select. They've set a maximum of 35 with, I believe, an additional one or two for relays if they consider it needed. Yeah, and I think I read there was um, there's a space for four reserves as well, just in mm. case someone gets injured or ill or something along those lines. Um, yes, yeah. So actually, I think you told me that we only took 26 swimmers to Rio. Yeah. So when actually, you, we're going to be look taking it on- more. Yeah, when you look at it on paper, 35 is not very many swimmers at all. No. When you consider America, their selection policy, I believe the maximum they can take is 52. But when they went to Rio, they only took 40, 46 or 48, something 40, like that. Yeah, something like that, yeah. But Team GB only took 26. So, so suddenly when you look at it like that, Tokyo's in a better place, swimming's in a better place. We've got a bigger squad to pick from, but 35 still isn't that many places. Well, I mean, I think, was there 16, 17 events in total, mm. of which you take the top two per event. And of course, some of those events are relays. Um, so some swimmers will go d- do the individual and the relay as well. But um, but yeah, 26 wasn't a lot for Rio. So it's quite good that we have a potential 35 places up for grabs. It gives uh, more opportunity for the young swimmers to come through, yeah. which I think would be, would be great. And hopefully, fingers crossed, this team will be named kind of the end of April. I think you said the 21st of April is the target date for the team to be named, but mm. it's kind of, it's a penciled in team. People can be added later on with those meets that we spoke about. Yeah. I mean, if you've came, if you've, if, if you're in the top two of your event and you've got faster than the qualification time, then you'll be, I think announced on the 21st of April. Yeah. yeah. And then if you haven't got that consideration time, then like I said, you've got the other meets later on which um, then you'll be, I think I read it's like the 5th of June or something along those lines anyway. Mm. So they they do have time anyway. So when you look at it in simple form, it is fairly straightforward. It is almost like it was before, but there seems to be Mm. a written line in the selection policy as, like I said before, a fail safe in case the head coach of GB Swimming says, actually, I want to take this swimmer, even though they've not hit the time. Yeah, I mean, I completely understand that if it's for, let's say, the 200 free, 100 free, because um, then you need the relay swimmers anyway. Mm-hmm. So some of those swimmers might not make the, the 200 individual qualification time, but they'll be good enough to be for in a relay team. So I completely understand that point of view. Yes, definitely. Okay, so let's kick things off, a preview of trials, and we are going to go through day by day and event by event, but we aren't going to try and dawdle on it. We're going to go through this as fast as possible. Quick fire, so, yeah. Yeah, so we're going to go through if it's an event that you really need to circle on the calendar and watch, um, who Mm. are the favourites for that race, who we are looking forward to seeing racing in that event, and then also the Olympic qualifying time that they need to hit, as we mentioned, as part of the selection criteria. Yeah. So Dan, do you want to kick things off? We start with a bang, actually. The women's 200 metres freestyle in session one, day one. We do. This is actually a very important race because, of course, the individual 200 free is up for grabs, but mm. there's four places up for grabs for the relay. Um, so you can kind of pick four of the... Basically, if you're in the top four, it seems like you're going to go to Tokyo. So this is a big race to begin with the, of the meet. Uh, this is on Wednesday, isn't it? Um, so, of course, yeah. the names to look out for is Freya Aronson. She is our, she's our best bet. She might even win a medal potentially at Tokyo. Fingers crossed that would be really, really good. Um, and well, then, she... of course, Abby Wood is uh, she's the one that's flying at the moment. She's the form swimmer, but um, we thought she did really well, didn't she? At the was it the Manchester meet where she went one fifty seven nine? Yeah. Um, 
And that time actually isn't quick enough for consideration for the individual just yet. No, so, so the gold standard to get automatically picked for the Olympic team is a 157.2. And now mm. Abby Wood went a 157.9. So there's chance she could drop down lower, but that was a PB this yep. season. So she's got a yep. month to improve and hopefully she gets to that mark. Now, Elsewhere, there's kind of four four of them, really, that are looking to be under that two-minute barrier. And together, I would have thought all four of those would make a really strong relay team. So you've got Lucy Hope, Holly Hibbert, Abby Wood, and Freya Anderson, with a few other names to look out for, like Candice Hall, Freya Colbert, and Leah Crisp. So there's a lot of names there, isn't there? There is. I mean, I would I would have thought that swimmers like Leah Crisp and Freya Colbert would be targeting the distance events. They're more distance freestylers. Same with kind of um, Holly Hibbert as well, but this might be a bit mm. of an opening to go as a relay swimmer if she qualifies for the 400 free. Oh, listen, if she comes top two, she's not going to say no to going to Tokyo for the 200 free. Oh, she's not going to say no. So she's going to give it everything, of course. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to give it her best shot, even though you're right that her best shot would be in the 800. But um, yeah, she's going to give it everything to get on, the, get on the plane to Tokyo. Why would not? Yeah, so the name obviously to look out for is Freya Anderson. It'd be really exciting to see just how fast she goes because in the ISL last year, she was in some really good form. And then Mm. you're looking at Abby Wood potentially looking to target that Olympic qualifying time and hopefully Freya drags her along to it. That would be nice. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be... Both my eyes are going to be on Abby Wood to see if she can go that 157.2. Um, it's a big ask. She's already PB'd by a second and a half, is it, mm. already? Yeah, it was a big so it, it, is a, it is a big ask, but um, it'd be fantastic if we can get two definite names on the, on the plane for the 200 free. And if you've got two individuals racing in the event itself, that all together makes your relay team a hell of a lot stronger. Oh yeah! Oh, definitely, yeah. So that's a it's a big race to begin with, isn't it? It kicks off very nicely. It does it does, and it also ends very nicely. But we'll get to that. We will get, we'll get to there. that. Right, no dawdling. The four hundred meters freestyle for the men's is next up, and Daniel Jervis has been looking in some incredible form so far in the Manchester meets. Yeah, I mean, he is. I think his place is already guaranteed. If you ask me, I mean, he's going to be going for the fifteen, fifteen hundred, um, the four hundred. Him and Tom Dean, I would say, are the two, the two best swimmers for this event. So the qualification time is three forty six, um, of which both their entry times are just off it. Um, mm. But fingers crossed, they they both actually have been. I would arguably say the top five form swimmers over the past two months at the Manchester meet. So hopefully they do their bit, and I think they'd be guaranteed top two places for the 403 yeah and unlike these the manchester meets previously there's a lot more on the line in this meet and there's a lot more competitive action so if anyone looks at the start lists you will see that there are actually three heats worth of swimmers Mm. which is a massive difference compared to what one heat not even a full heat sometimes at the manchester meets so there's a lot more competition for places and for winning which is only going to drive these times faster so if they are pbs or entry times slightly slower than the olympic qualifying standard this added competition could actually push them over the edge oh yeah definitely i mean it's something that we talked about a lot actually that we were we were moaning that there was only four, three, even one summer per mm. race or per final at the Manchester meet. So um, based looking at the, all of these races, there's at least two heats per event. Um, so it, I think there might even be A and B finals, which is which is great. Again, a race experience for these guys who haven't been in the water or some of them haven't been in the water or racing for, you know, best part of a year. Okay, so moving on, the women's 400 IM. And this one's another one I'm really looking forward to seeing how the second place swimmer goes. So Amy yes. Wilmot is on paper right now, head and shoulders above everyone, but we do have a comeback for Hannah Miley. Yes, yeah, well, we spoke to her, didn't we, on the podcast um, mm. not so long ago now, a good couple of months ago, um, and she's been recovering from a shoulder injury. Um, and the story that she's gone through, the, the rehab she's had to go through, mm. basically retraining her body, it's inspirational, really. Um, so I'd love to see her go to Tokyo, but there is a young, a young swimmer in Michaela Glenister who could really upset that sort of comeback, if you like. Um, yeah, I think again, this is an event where I'm not sure two swimmers are going to get selected because the Olympic qualifying time is a four thirty-six. What six? 
Mm. I think Amy Wilmot will do well to get to that, and then it's see what see how close the others go and if they have discretion to be selected. I think that's a really tough time to hit. Yeah, it's not easy, is it? Um, I'd like to say that Amy Wilmot, Wilmot is definitely going to be going. Um, it's just the, whether the other two, because based on paper, the entry times are four thirty nine. I'm talking about Hannah Miley and Michaela. Um, I mean, three seconds is a is a bit of a drop, isn't it? So, well, we'll yeah, see. Hannah Miley's entry time clearly isn't her PB because she's got the British record in four hundred IM. Yeah. So, yeah. I think if she, I think it's a lot to ask of her to get to near her PB. But any yeah. good comeback swim that puts it in consideration. And like you said, then she's got four more meets later on this year, hopefully, to give her mm. a chance to build up that fitness and get selected if that spot's still open. Yeah, there's backup meets if uh, if it doesn't go well, like you said, at the very beginning of these trials. So they've got the, the backups where they could hopefully uh, get those times if they miss it this weekend. Okay, so... Next up, the 100 metres breaststroke. I'm not sure we need to say too much about the leading entry, Adam Peaty. He's he's on the plane. He's going already. And mm-hmm. so is James Wilby in the 100 metres breaststroke as well, I believe, because he won silver yeah. at World Championships. So this is kind of a dead rubber. Yeah, I mean, it's it's good race experience for the rest of those summers to race the, the two best in the world, effectively. Um, so it's great for them, but... Um, there doesn't seem to be any places. Well, there won't be. There's no places, There's no places. for <laughs> anyone else for the, for the men's 100 breaststroke. So, um, in so effect, what, yes, you're right, a dead rubber, but good at race experience either way. Yeah, so what you might find is a few of these guys will be loosening off their legs for the 200 metres breaststroke later on in the programme. The likes of Ross Murdoch, Craig Benson, and James Wilby himself are likely mm. just to be getting into race shape. Yeah, I mean, if I'm James Wilby, this is the time where I was trying and Get as close to Adam Peters as you can. Um, I, I'm sure PC won't be tapering. He might be tapering a little bit, but he won't be on full taper at all. Um, so if you can get close to Adam and build up that bit, little bit of confidence, which he was starting to get at the end of um, mm. the Manchester meet, wasn't he? He, he actually yeah. got a little bit close to him. So it's a, it's a confidence build, I feel, for James Wilby. Um, and hopefully, yeah, I mean, he's on the plane anyway, and hopefully uh, he does well. So next up, the women's 100 metres butterfly. Now, on paper, this is a very fun race. There's... This was I. This I wrote this down as one of the, the highlights of the meet actually, because mm. um, these places there's no guarantees here. I mean that you've got how many swimmers have, have gone under a minute here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's <laughs> eight counting. swimmers. I had to count. There's eight swimmers under a minute. Um, so we're, we're likely and... to have a full final under a minute. But again, mm. the Olympic qualifying time is rapid here. They've, 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 got go fif- they've got to go. They've got to go fifty-seven. They've got to go a 57.9, and on paper, none of them have gone under 58. So if you go under 58, I would say you're selected. But again, on Mm -hmm. paper, this is a blanket finish. This could just be a fun race to watch. Well, I mean, mean, I've sort of circled Laura Stevens, who is more of a 200 fly swimmer, um, and I imagine she'd be picked to go for the 200 fly. And if Mm. she's going for the 200 fly, um, there might be, you know, that sort of consideration from, or discretion, sorry, from the head coach, they might just put her on the 100 fly anyway just because she's there. Um, but actually, of the, the top swimmers, I would say that Harriet Jones is the form swimmer. She's the one that's been knocking out PVs at the last two Manchester meets. So I would say she's actually favourite to win the 100 fly overall, but it's just whether she can get down to that 57 mark, which is a, which is a big ask. Of, I mean, half a second over 100 metres is a, is a lot. Yeah, but hopefully the discretion comes where these swimmers, Mm. a lot of these are still really, really young. So hopefully they get taken on experience. But I think it might be an event where it's tough to see an automatic qualifier to pick from. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, basically, I mean, it's going to be a great watch for me because it's just uh, it's just a blanket finish. I mean, who you just don't know who's going to win. I would favour Harriet Jones, but I mean, it could go anyway. It's, It's going to be a great watch, that one. And then we finish day one with another big, big race, the men's 200 individual medley. Now, the class of the field, Duncan Scott, is already going, although not in this event. I would expect him to be head and shoulders ahead of this field, if I'm perfectly honest. And it's a very good field. It is a very good field. I mean, the qualification time is 158, of which Duncan has gone 156. So if he chooses to enter the 200 IM, um, which I think he will. I think he will, based off that sort of time. Mm. Uh, I think he will, even though we favour him to should target the 200 free. Um, I think he will race that 200 IM. 
but it's just whether who who joins him on that 200 IM. I mean, you've got Joe Litchfield, Max Litchfield, uh, and Mark Sranick, um, all of which have gone under two minutes. It's going to be a fascinating race. I mean, who who do you pick out of those to join Duncan? Difficult one. Ooh, it's hard. I think Max is going to be targeting more of the 400 IM, mm, if I'm perfectly yes. honest. And then Joe Litchfield might also be targeting the 100 back, or maybe yeah. even the 100 fly and... Oh, there's so many. The, the Litchfield brothers are so versatile. There's so many different events they could target if they really wanted to and just nail down. I think I'm going to favor Joe for the 200 IM, and I mm. think he's in with a shout. I mean, Dave Hemming's squad up in Loughborough have been doing really well at the Manchester meets. Yeah, they have. I think yeah. he's not got to drop his PB much to get on the plane to Tokyo. So if if I'm him, I'm this day one, go for it. I I, I yep. think Duncan Scott's already. Let, let's be honest; he's already on the plane for this event. Yeah, yeah. Again, it's it's going to be a really, really close race for second that I'm looking forward to. I'm gonna yep. throw my hat out there and say Joe, but but we we will see. Yeah, well, this is the third race I've so I've I've circled nine races in total. I'm really looking forward to this. Is the third race, and it's um, all, only on I day just, one. <laughs> and it's only on day one. Can you believe? Yeah, I mean, I would I would favour Joe as well, but. Um, we're going to get onto the men's hundred backstroke in a minute because I would, uh, I wouldn't bet against him to, you know, upset um, Greenbank, you know. But we'll, mm. we'll move on to that. But uh, yeah, the two hundred IM all up for grabs. Um, whoever can get one fifty eight is is on the plane by the look of things. So yeah. really looking forward to it. So that's day one done. We have two or three really really close races to look forward to. We have some superstars in the pool with Duncan Scott, Adam Peaty. Freya Anderson, I mean, Alice James Thomas, Wolby. we didn't even mention her. There's yeah. some big names racing on day one, so it's going to be a great way to kick off this British selection meet. Now, day two, it starts with another big name in the water in the 200 metres butterfly in Jimmy Guy. Now, I had kind of <laughs> stupidly, I had stupidly <laughs> written Jimmy Guy off at the start of the Manchester meets, and especially in the 200 fly, because he doesn't really train for this event. But clearly... The man has some incredible endurance, and I think he's one of the fastest swimmers in the world at 200 fly this year. So he's going for the 200 butterfly. I have no doubt. He's going. Do you reckon? I mean, the qualification time is 155. Um, His PB is 156, so he's not guaranteed to swim uh, at Tokyo in this event. That's a tough qualification time. That is very tough. Seems that the world record is, what, 150.7, but that's only one man. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's a it's a very tough. T- some uh, some events are, are very tough to get onto. Mm. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if he he swam it anyway through the the discretion of the head coach. Um, mm. But actually, I'm going to ignore Jimmy Guy a little bit because I think he's already going. Well, hang on. But it's actually be- before you before you do move on. My point okay. would be that Jimmy Guy is guaranteed to go for a relay. Yes. So he is going to be racing 200 butterfly at Tokyo. Is my thinking. Yeah, I mean, give it, just I, I give him the race. Think, yeah, I can't think of anyone who's quicker than him at a hundred fly um, right now, and I mm. think he would be on the medley relay team because of that. And you're probably right. I think he's going to go for the two hundred fly just because he's on the plane anyway. Mm. Um, so it does make sense. You'd you'd rather enter Jimmy Guy than have no one at all. Yeah, um, Although, Jimmy Guy is an out and out racer, and he will put in everything into each race. So yeah, it'd be stupid not to pick him. Right, go back to your point you were saying, behind Jimmy Guy, who's to look out for? Yes, well, Ed Mildred, uh, Northampton swimmer. He is, uh, I think he's still a teenager, if I got that right, 18, 19. Uh, mm. 158 is his time. Um, very difficult, of course, if you're going to go three seconds quicker over 200 I- at 200 fly. Very, very difficult. But um, again, this is where the discretion comes in. I would be taking him just to get the experience on his side. I you bet know? you all these swimmers listening wish that you were the selection committee <laughs> well, just case, take like, him just take him. everyone go take him for experience <laughs> yeah. how many planes do we need we need about <laughs> <Let's take everyone. laughs> two swimmers every event let's go yeah, unfortunately well, i think it should be but... it, it really should be it really should be yeah. especially for these 18 year olds come three yeah. years time in paris it's going to give them the world of confidence but it's not like that that's why british swimmen only took 26 swimmers to rio they aren't quite yeah. as generous as dan yeah, I know. Well, I'm not in charge of all the finances, so I don't know what it's all like. <laughs> so it might, this race could all be eyes on Jimmy Guy on the clock. That could be all it is if we're, yeah, if we're it, being 
blunt and brutal. Yeah, unfortunately, that's the case. So it's one fifty five point four as well. So it's you know it's a so mid one fifty five point nine faster than he went in Manchester. Yeah, so it's a big ask. It's a big ask, but um, I I believe he could do it. Um, and then hopefully, if he were to go that sort of time, Ed Mildred could sort of follow and bring in a one fifty seven sort of like a sort of time. Hey, look, that'd be a good a good PB. So when you're eighteen and you're swimming. This is his first Olympic trials. All you can ask for is a personal best, and then you'd yep. be happy. That's that's all these swimmers really need to do, given the year they've had. If they PB, then they've done amazingly. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's another swimmer who I've I've just seen as well, mm. um, Jay Lelliot, who didn't he hasn't swam at the last two Manchester meets, but we spoke to him on a podcast, and he, much like Jimmy Guy, has a massive aerobic capacity. Mm. Um, and he's able to do pretty much every race, the, the 400 free, the 1500 free, uh, and the 200 fly, of course. So I wouldn't be surprised if he comes through a little bit with a, a 158, 157, something like that. But it depends how rusty he is when he, because uh, he hasn't raced for so long. But we'll see. Okay, moving quickly on. We said we wouldn't dawdle. Let's try not to. The yep. women's 100 meters backstroke. And this is one that you've circled. I know you have because... Yes, yeah. One of the stalwarts of British swimming, Georgia Davis, is slightly under pressure of making the team here. She is. She is. It's not guaranteed for her at all. Um, now, the qualification time for women's 100 backstroke is a minute point two. And mm. based off the top three, they, they are all, all that. under that. So this is an out and out race for the top two positions. Um, and. Based off the last two meets at Manchester, Kathleen Dawson, I think, is guaranteed. She's a, a nearly a full second ahead of Cassie Ward and George yeah. Davis. But barring um, disaster, I'd pack your mm. pack your bag to Tokyo now. Yes, honestly, and then she's this is, gone the fastest time in the world this year in a hundred back. She's yeah, she's going. Yeah, and this is where I've circled this race because this is a great head to head between George Davis and Cassie Wilde. Um, because of course I I would say Georgia is more of a fifty back swimmer, but of course that's not at the Olympic schedule. Nope. Um, so really, this is her only a chance to to race at Tokyo. Because I would have thought Kathleen Dawson would be on the medley relay. Um, so this this is her only shot. Same with Cassie Wild, really. So it's a fantastic race. This is I'm really looking forward to it. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> I can really hear the excitement. I can hear the excitement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so if you're going to put your neck out there, who are you picking? Oh my word! Um, I like the idea of taking Cassie Wild just because it, it it's a great experience for her. Um, well, but at the got, same she, time, I wouldn't. Yeah, she's I wouldn't win. deprive Georgia if she's gonna. You know, if Georgia comes second, then you got to take a hat off to her. I mean, she is. I think she's ten years older than Cassie. But if she's still the second best in the country, you got to go to on the plane. But um, I like the idea of Cassie Wild making the team. Okay, I would say whoever finishes first and second is breaking that Olympic qualifying time, they're going. Yeah. So yeah. it's not a yeah. case of they finish second and they might choose to pick the third place person. Those those top two in this event is one of the few actually so far that we've looked at where the top two are, they, they're going to hit that automatic. qualifying time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so next up is the men's 100 backstroke. Now this one's a really, really interesting one because it is key to GB's 4x100 medley relay. Now, Luke Greenbank is obviously the star in the 200 metres backstroke, but the 100, this is a bit more open. Yeah, I mean, on paper, he is, what's that, 0.5 quicker than uh, than Joe Litchfield and Brody Williams. Mm. But um, that position is not guaranteed for Luke. He's guaranteed on the 200 back, I would say. Mm. But this 100 backstroke, is it's no plain sailing for him here. Um, and actually, Joe Litchfield and Brody Williams are, I would say, are the two. Well, actually, I'd say all three. So you've got Greenbank, Litchfield, and Brody Williams. They were the form swimmers, the mm. form male swimmers at the two Manchester meets. Um, another fantastic race. We're going to have two back to back 100 backstrokes where uh, there's a lot on the line here. Yeah, there is. This is a huge event. I mean, there's six guys that have gone sub 55. So, mm. look, if I'm. I've done it to you, I'll, I'll put my neck out. I'll say. <laughs> I think Joe gets this one, but. I'm really excited to see what Brody Williams does in the 200 meters backstroke. That's the event I'm really excited for him. Yeah, well, this one's not as exciting, I suppose, in terms of qualifying qualifying for Tokyo because the qualification time is 53.8, okay. which means which means on paper Green Bank is under that by 0.05. Um, 
So L- Litchfield and Brody Williams are going to have to hit PBs to get their guaranteed place on the plane, but as well as finishing top two, of course. They could finish second and go as part of the medley relay team as a reserve and swim the heats while Luke Greenbank just does the final. Uh, correct, yeah. That, that could so, be an option for them, given the yes. fact that Luke Greenbank is definitely racing the 200 back. Yeah, um, I mean, if you if you're going to take Joe Litchfield on a 200 IM, which you said earlier, mm. um, it would kind of make sense if he does a hundred back as well. But if Brody Williams causes a bit of an upset, which he might do, um, I, I wouldn't bet against him right now. He 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 swam very well at the two man at two Manchester meets. Mm. So another great race. Really looking forward to that one too. <laughs> and there's another fast one coming up afterwards. There is good racing galore at this meet. Yes, women's yeah. 200 meters breaststroke. We've got the British record holder in Molly Renshaw, and then we have Abby Wood who pushed her all the way to that British record. And I'm actually really yeah. excited to see what Abby Wood does in the 200. Yes, yeah, she's also entered the 100 breaststroke, if I remember right. Abby oh. Wood, um, oh. not she's not in the top echelon of the 100 breaststrokers because, of course, you got Sarah Vasey and Imogen Clark. So I wouldn't say she was she's going to go for the the 100 breaststroke race, but the 200 breaststroke. Um, yeah, I mean, there's it's a, it's a clear top two on paper. Mind you, Jocelyn Hewlett is also the joint British yeah, record holder is, yeah. for this 200 breaststroke. Hasn't been on that sort of firing form that Molly Renshaw has, but um, you know she's got 222 in her. So, yes, another great race. It's a very, very fast event, this, and we could actually see a British record at trials. If I look at the qualifying time, they've got to go sub 223.3, and both those girls did that at the start of February, I want to say it was. It was that long uh, ago? That was, I think it was, yes, yeah. So they're both perfectly capable of doing that, and I'd, I'd honestly expect them both to do it. It's it's just about how fast Molly Renshaw goes and if Abby Wood can stick on her shoulder. Yeah, basically. I mean, if they they just got to swim exactly the same way as what they did uh, a, a couple of months ago, 2.22 mm-hmm. when you're on the plane. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I firmly believe that those two would do it. It's just whether um, Jocelyn or Kayla van der Merwe is going to cause any sort of upset, you know? So, um, yeah. But I would I would sort of stick with the top two, Abby Wood and Molly Renshaw, to, to pull away on this event. So... We then have both 800 freestyles, which are mm. settled by fastest heat, which means there isn't going to be a final, whoever swims fastest in the morning, although they might throw these heats into the final session. We we don't quite know right now. Yeah, it doesn't quite say, does it? But yeah. Now, standing out again is Daniel Jervis. He's got a really fast time. But on the women's side, there's there's a few notable absentees. Holly Hibbert isn't doing the 800 freestyle. Holly Hibbert's not racing it, which surprises me, seeing as though she would, I would say she is the the strongest 800 freestyler mm. um, in the country right now. But then on the flip side of that, it does open a door for the young swimmers in Leah Crisp and Michaela Glenister to to take up that role. Um, it does. Again, this is a, for the women's side, the qualifying time is tough. I think if we're being realistic, none of these girls are going to hit that time at this meet. I think the they're going to have to improve their PBs by 20 seconds, which is that's hard. That's, that's a hard yeah. ask, and that qualifying time is fast. I think that's Katie Ledecky's fault because of the ridiculous <laughs> world just, record that she's yeah. done. Um, I can only imagine what the 100 breaststroke qualification time will be after Tokyo when Adam Peaty no doubt hits another world record, I would say. Well, on the but, men's um, side, the 100 breaststroke, you've got to go a 59.2, which is not slow. <laughs> It's not the okay, right? Yeah, well, there you go. That's because of the world record, you yeah. see. Um, and Casey Ledecky has made this Olympic qualifying time for the 800 really hard to get. Um, phew, difficult. I mean, what did you say? 20 seconds they've got to hit, or near enough 20 seconds. So they've got to go in 8.22, which is, is fast. 18 seconds. That's a, it's a big ask, isn't it? Um, yeah. Well, and we'll just have to see how well they do. Even on the guy's side, you're. You're talking Daniel Jervis. He's racing against the clock here. He's 10 seconds faster than everyone else. But Mm. he's got to go sub 750 to get on the plane, which is a PB. It's it's around his personal best. He's got to swim fast with no one to race against. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to think that he would be picked anyway, um, whether he hits that qualification time or not. This is your generosity Um, again. I know. Maybe I should be more strict. I don't know. But... (laughs) I would take him anyway. Why not? Um, but based off the qualification time, he's gone a four forty. He's gone a seven forty nine zero. And what was the time you said? Seven fifty. So he's actually inside the time anyway. Well, he's got to go seven forty nine nine. Okay, so he's still underneath it then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I think he's going to go. It's just I don't know if anyone's going to be joining him, unfortunately, because that mm. time is quite tough, isn't it? Yeah, it's fast. It's fast. So that's the end of day two. There's some really close competitions in the backstroke to pay attention to. The women's 200 meters breaststroke, again, there's going to be some really, really fast times there. And then otherwise, it looks like it's a race against the clock for some of the top GB swimmers on that day. It, it's going to be a tough day to hit the Olympic times, I think. Yeah, apart from the, the, the 100 backstrokes, male and female, uh, the other races are extremely tough to qualify for mm. Tokyo. Um, this is so the good reality, luck to those isn't it? Because it's going to be tough. Yeah. The oh, reality yeah, yeah. is that even if you finish top two, you're not guaranteed a pick given the mm. times that you've got to hit, which I disagree with. Let's be honest. If you finish top two in the country, just go. I'll be generous like Dan, but it doesn't quite work <laughs> yeah. that way. Otherwise, the Olympics would... Uh, the sessions would just be humongous, especially for the heats, wouldn't they, if every country took two swimmers? Uh, yeah, I mean, it does make sense to have these qualification times. Otherwise, the Olympics would have to go on for months. Mm. Um, so, it do- yeah, it does make sense. But I, I, I like the idea of taking two swimmers, um, of, yeah, two best swimmers from each country. Um, but, yeah, that's the way it is. And uh, we'll have to deal with it, I suppose. Mm. <laughs> Okay, so day three, let's start rattling through these. Like I said before, it starts with the 400 meters IM, which is going to be targeted by Max Litchfield. He is the only swimmer in this field who can go underneath the qualifying time on PBs. I think he's a good six seconds clear of everyone else, and I would expect him to obviously win this race and get that Olympic qualifying spot. Um, yeah, the qualifying time is 4.13, so he's a good three seconds underneath it, really. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if he goes. This is It's basically just it's a one-man race, really, just to see um, just to see he's going to qualify in my head. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just whether anyone else in, like Charlie Hutchison, Brody Williams, Mark Sranick, can get anywhere near that time of 4.13. Um, big ask when it's a three-second PB they've got to hit, but I think all eyes will be on Max Litchfield for that race. And the second race of the day is... Actually, this one's really, really exciting. I have this circled Mm. myself. The women's 200 meters butterfly. The qualifying time is sub 208. And there's three girls who can do that. So you've got Alice Thomas, who is the experienced head in the field. And then you have Laura Stevens and Emily Large, who they had a really good head-to-head at the last Manchester meet, didn't they? They did, yeah. They were the head and shoulders, the top two, actually. Mm-hmm. Even though Alice Thomas did race, but because she hasn't raced, there's a lot of restiness and cobwebs to, to get rid of. Um, so she wasn't quite up up to par. But now with another month of training and that meet under her belt, she could become a bit of a force again. Um, we got to remember that she was Commonwealth champion, wasn't she? Mm-hmm. Um, can't remember what year it was now. 2018, was it? Um, so she's got that pedigree. She's going to be... She's got that international experience. So... Who knows? It's a three-way tussle, isn't it? It is. It's two places up for grabs. Yeah, it's three into two because I would have thought the top two here break that Olympic qualifying time. Emily Large right now is Mm -hmm. like 0.04 off it. So if you you finish in the top two, I think you're on the plane. So it's a good three-way battle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and those two girls, especially Emily Large, she did a very nice 200 fly at uh, the second meet in Manchester. Mm. So I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't bet against her right now. But I think, for me, Laura Stevens goes. I think she wins the race. Um, it just see who joins her. Yeah. Okay, third race of the day. One of the most exciting out of the whole competition. The men's 100 metres freestyle. Now, this is it's going to be really key for the relay team. There's so many swimmers here that could go. Honestly, oh, you, you look at the top eight, and I can't pick anyone other than Duncan Scott and then pull a name out of a hat I mean God, I'm going to be like you I'm going to be picking names out of hats so I have no idea who's I think Duncan Scott's going he's really the he's, he's the top guy for this 100 free it's yeah. just who joins him uh, the I qualification mean, time is 48.3 ooh, um, and believe fast. it or not wow. only Duncan Scott is under that time okay. but of course there's but four there's places the up for the relay, the relay. so um, and this is where I'm going to sort of repeat what you say, taking the youngsters. Mm. Um, Jacob Whittle, even though he's all the way, I say all the way, he's a sixth fastest. I think he's one of those prime swimmers that you take for the relay mm. just to build that experience. Because in three years time in Paris, he might be a global threat. He might yeah. be on the podium. You just don't know, do you? So if we look at the names after Duncan Scott, we've got David Cumberledge, Matt Richards, Scott McClay. 
Jack Thorpe, Jacob Whittle, and then Tom Dean. I mean, Tom Dean could very well go, even though he's seventh fastest going into this event. He's looked in really good form in the 100 freestyle. Yeah, and of course, Callum Jarvis, you missed that as well. He might, <laughs> I mean, I saw, I feel like he peaks. And then, not, like, I'll tell you what, all the way down here, here you've, but... got, you've got Joe Litchfield as well. Blind. Yeah. This is, tell you what, it's going to take some to make the final. Yep. Let from alone the racing point of view, get from on the racing plane. point of view, it's a fantastic race. Um, I mean, it's going to be all down to the finish by the look of things. Um, for anyone who wants to go to Tokyo, you're going to have to look at the clock. I mean, 48.3 mm. is tough. You've got to find half a second based on some of these times that these guys have swam. Mm. But I don't, for me, yeah. you want to guarantee your place on the plane by going on the relay, um, which means you've got to finish top four. Yeah, so, so the top four will likely be picked for the relay, and then maybe if Jacob Whittle finishes sixth, there might be consideration because he's a younger guy just to take him as a reserve. But possibly in yeah. all likely, I mean, I, I mean, I, honestly, I'm not even, four. I'm not even going to try and predict this. No, After Duncan no point. Scott, I don't know. Yeah, you're going to have to just pick him out of a hat, flip a coin. I don't know. Pick a name. Yeah, we'll take you. <laughs> I was going to say a coin's only got two sides, and we need about six of them. Okay, a dice then, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the men's 100 meters freestyle, look out for it. It's going to be really interesting. Yeah, monster race. A lot on the line, definitely. So next we have the women's 400 meters freestyle. This is where Holly Hibbert is going to come into her own. Yeah, she's head and shoulders above. Um, 4.07 is her time. She's five seconds quicker than second place uh, or second fastest swimmer in Leah Crisp. Um, Do you know what time she's got to go, though? Time? She's got to go a four oh five nine. Oh, this is this is Katie Ledecky for you. She's caused chaos in the distance swimming events for the women. Um, <laughs> These times are four oh five. Yeah, so that's two seconds, isn't it, just for Holly Hibbert? Let alone Leah Crisp and Mia Slevin, who are back on four twelves and four fifteen. Um, so it's going to have to be a race against the clock for Holly Hibbert. Whether she's going to make it or not, I've no idea. But she might get the um, decision to go from the head GB coach. Yeah, we I shall think this, see. Is, this is just the blunt reality of right at the top end elite swimming. If anyone yep. wasn't aware of how tough it is, you can be the fastest in the country by five seconds and you're still not going to the Olympics because you haven't hit that crazy fast time. It's tough. Very <laughs> tough. Very, very cutthroat, isn't it? it I'd is love to cutthroat. know what the selection policy is. Should she go a... 406 and just miss it but she's head and shoulders above everyone else i i'd like to hope she goes but well, i get the feeling it might not be that simple i don't know i think she'll be picked for the 4 by 200 relay which then mm. makes sense you might as well enter her for the 400 that's that's my mentality if she's going anyway um just put her on her favorite event she's only let's let's hope she goes 405 406 and mm -hmm. she just misses out that time um just put her on the plane anyway because it's better better to have one summer go than have no one go, you know? Yeah, Seems exactly. she's going anyway. But it uh, depends how the um, head coaches at GB are going to look at it. Well, hopefully they have your attitude of let's take everyone. <sighs> That'd be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> they, they could and bring then, us as well. <laughs> yeah. And then we finish day three with actually kind of one of GB's underrated strong events in the men's 200 metres breaststroke because both Ross Murdoch and James will be they can make the final of the Olympics in this event. They're both on the plane, I would have thought, if they just if they swim well. Yeah, well, the time to qualify is 2.090, of which both of them have done 2.07s before in the past. Um, and they've both so... swam really competitively on the highest stage of all in terms of swimming. So yeah, it's kind of just how fast they go in April. I know over at the Japan Championships, what was it, today? On the day we're recording, there has been some yep. ridiculously fast times being swum. There was the second fastest 200 breaststroke ever swam. Yeah. yeah. So breaststroke is moving on. There are some very fast times coming out. It's whether these two boys can keep up. Um, effectively, yeah. I mean, I don't know what James Wilby's going to target. I would say he would target the 100 more so than the 200. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, 2074 is nothing to sniff at, you know. It's a very quick time. Yeah. Um, I've sort of said to you, haven't I, that I think... I do believe the winner of the, the, the Olympic gold medalist of the 200, 200 breaststroke is going to go 205. Mm. Um, and First I man think ever. 20, yeah, 206 is going to get you a medal, I feel. Um, so if those boys can get anywhere near that, then you know we're looking at a very good medal there because there's some fast Japanese swimmers. I think there's one, one swimmer who 
is he the world record holder? I can't remember, but he's not going as far as I know. No, he he was the previous Japanese record holder, Wanatabi, mm. and he has gone yeah, two o right. high two o six before, and he missed the team, which is stunning. Yeah. Just incredible. Honestly, that that blew my mind. Yeah, absolutely how you can incredible. go? I think he went a low two o eight and missed the team. I'd be yeah. gutted if that was me. Yeah. That's the end of day three. I hope you're all still with us. We've got two more days of Able Body to go before we get into the Paris racing, which is going to be happening in Sheffield the week before. So we kick off day four with the women's 100 meters freestyle. And again, this is a very close race because Freya Anderson is the name everyone's talking about, but she's not the fastest qualifier for this. Anna Hopkin is. Yes. Well, the good thing is, is that they're both under the consideration time which is 53.8 so okay, comfortably uh, as well. they're quite comfortably under it if they can go a low 53 they're both gonna go um and i haven't circled this one because i kind of think that these two are going to go anyway um it's just whether who gets the pride of winning at that at trials basically who is the number 100 freestyler in the country but i think they're both going to go either way Okay, well, let's move on very quickly. That's very simple. <laughs> yes, Next yeah. up, the men's 50 meters freestyle. Now, there were a few surprising names missing from this event. Now, I thought Matt Richards might have gone for it. But when you told me the selection time is a 21.7, it kind of makes sense him skipping this and aiming for the two relay races. Yep. I mean, it's such a tough time to hit. This is the Dressel effect for you, even though he's not well, a world record holder, mind you. I uh, but, um, don't know about that. <laughs> Twenty one seven. Twenty one seven is what what's the twenty one seven point what? Point eight. Oh my god. Twenty twenty one seven. If anyone has seven. listened to Propulsion Swimming Podcast before or followed us on social media, anything on YouTube, you will know I used to do fifty freestyle. Twenty one seven eight is if you break that time, you've gone the fastest time in the world this year. Manadu is the only person who's gone that. That is yep. a crazy qualification time. Yeah, um, I don't know what to say about it, quite frankly. What did I'm, Ben I'm Proud stunned. do? I'm stunned. I think and ben if Proud I'm went... honest, if I'm honest, Ben Proud isn't hitting that at this meet. I think this is one of the events. I think he's going to Tokyo. I'm not mm. saying he's not going. I think he hits this at the Men Ostrom in June or something like that. He hits that qualification time then, and they just say, look, the sprinters need a longer taper. He's going to get faster as the taper gets gets longer. Yeah, um, and I kind of agree. That's the reason why Matt Richards didn't take it up because that twenty one seven is crazy fast. Only like you say, one summer has only gone that time so far this year. Mm. Um, ben Proud went, I think, twenty one nine when he did that split in the hundred meter when he stopped. Um, ridiculous sort of speed, really. Yeah. Especially this sort of time of year. Um, if you're if you're an American with, with your June uh, with your trials in June then you're more likely to hit that time. But yeah, as of yeah, March, definitely. April sort of time, it's very difficult. Um, so I think there's going to be a lot of discretion for this 53. Um, yeah, and I would have thought Ben Proud Pratt... is head and shoulders above everyone in the country. So I would have thought he goes anyway. I would have thought he goes and he might actually be the only person to go. Possibly, yeah. Yeah, but I'm I'm still... I could go into it for another whole podcast episode. But that is a <laughs> stupid time to be asking people to swim in April. Honestly, yeah. it's just, that's ridiculously fast. Well, we'll see. Um, it'd be interesting to see how quick he does go because I've kind of half predicted that he would go 21-7. I think that that sort of time that he has to hit, I think he will just about make it. That's my, where my mind is. I was going to say, in, we'll see. in our kind of build-up to this podcast, me and Dan have obviously discussed certain events off off the microphone. And I said to him, mm. if I'm Ben Proud and I go a 21.7, a 21.8, anywhere near Manadu's times right now, I am over the moon. That's mm. perfect. Yep. So if he gets that qualification time, I'm super, super happy. But if he misses it, again, as long as he goes sub-22, I'm not I'm not phased. Yeah, I wouldn't be worried too much, especially if you've got the four meets after mm. trials to, to get that time. I wouldn't be too worried about it. I mean, like you say, his his PB is 21-1, which is ridiculous time. Yeah. Um, so he's got he's more than capable of getting down there. He just needs time to, to get the extra months of training and taper in. Um, I've got no problems. I don't think he's, he's going to be on the plane for Tokyo. I wouldn't mm. worry about it. Who would have thought we could spend so long on a 50 freestyle? I know, God, and there's only one <laughs> summer to really talk about. <laughs> right, next up, the women's 200 metres backstroke. 
this one's another one. It's, it's a good race. Because Kathleen Dawson's it's, target is obviously the 100 back. She's the fastest time in the world at it this year. But yep. then you've got Co- Chloe Golding, Honey Osrin, Cassie Wilde again. It, it's a good field, this. Yeah, this is one I've circled, actually. Even though the qualification time is very difficult to get, 2.08, Ooh. all of these girls have got to go a second or two quicker. Mm. This might be a, it, an um, event where Kathleen Dawson is going on the 100 backs, so you let her do the 200 back, but the others I agree. might miss out. Yeah, and that's that's the thought process I had, actually. Um, mm-hmm. So from the Tokyo point of view, it's not really something to, to get excited about. But from a racing point of view, uh, fantastic race. We've got a lot of young swimmers there. Cassie Ward, Honey Osrin, um, fantastic swimmers coming through. And they will give Kathleen Dawson and Chloe Golding, who are slightly more experienced, a little bit of run for their money. Yeah, so I mean, from a racing point of view, it's a good watch. What are we looking? Honey Osrin is 18. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you're doing well if you finish third at olympic trials and you're 18 i'd be very yeah, exactly. happy <laughs> yeah so i think they, they should forget about the time just concentrate on trying to win that race because you mm. never know winning the race might luckily might get you hopefully get you that time so we'll see um it's just about winning that's why i've kind of circled that one rather just ignore the time just win the race so next up we have the 100 meters butterfly for the guys jimmy guy goes in fastest qualifier and the only swimmer slated to be under the qualifying time I think you've got to break 52 to go on the Tokyo plane. I expect Jimmy Guy to do that. I'm slightly mm. questioning why Duncan Scott's swimming it. Um, well, he hasn't raced now. He hasn't. This is his only race this day, isn't it? It is, yeah. Um, so I don't know if he's just trying to keep the body working, keep yourself, give yourself momentum, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Possibly. Um, I mean, he's going to swim the final, I would have thought, so it's just a little bit of a, a swim out for him. But, of course, what was the, the, t- the time? 51.9, was you've it? You've got to break 52. Okay, so it's, I mean, it's not too far away. 52-2 is the time he's gone. It's not a million miles away. No, um, he isn't. But realistically, that you add that into the schedule come yeah. the Olympics. Mm. I'm, I doubt he even races it at the Olympics, if I'm honest. I, I wouldn't want him to because then he's, he's you know, he could potentially do as many races as Dressel. That's how versatile and how strong he is at some of these races. Um, I would. I think this is just a swim out for him. This is just a, a keep busy sort of swim. Mm-hmm. Um, I think all the eyes are going to be on Jimmy Guy. Um, he is the the top hundred fly swimmer in the country, really. Um, but I'm going to be watching Jacob Peters and Ed Mildred as well. Um, if they can get anywhere near to that sort of time, low fifty two, then I think that's a very good swim. Yeah, I think Jacob Peters, his form in the fifty butterfly in the Manchester meets, I think he's in with a really good shout of hopefully getting that Olympic qualifying time. Yeah, I mean, that would be excellent, actually. Um, he's only got to go 0.2 quick. I say only. He's got to go 0.2 quicker, um, which is just an extra dolphin kick off the start and turn, you know, mm. no breathing the last 10 metres instead of the last five metres. You know, those little tiny differences um, can make all the difference between going to Tokyo and not. So, yeah, hopefully, fingers crossed, he will be on the plane. That would be nice. And then finishing day four, we have one of Britain's strongest under the radar medal hopes in Abbey Wood in the 200 metres I am I don't think we need to talk too much about her she's two seconds under the Olympic qualifying time second fastest time in the world this year faster than Ohashi faster than Mark Gallis Mm. she's going she's going to be a medal threat in the 200 I am and I think we take a second person here I think Alicia Wilson and maybe Hannah Miley if she is up to speed are in with a shout of going as well yeah, well, I was going to say, actually, I think Abby Wood, you kind of forget about her. She's going, um, and it's just the two summers behind her. Um, Alicia Wilson's got a fantastic chance. Mm. I think well, she's only just off that qualification time. Is this so just this a... is the first time we're seeing her this season, if I'm correct. Yes. So yeah, that so might actually... count against her slightly, but I guess the same counts for Hannah Miley. Same with Hannah Miley. So it just depends who is able to brush off the cobwebs best, really. Um We'll see, but I think Hannah Miley would be more targeted to the uh, 400 I am. But we'll see. I mean, it's it's just a, it's a one swimmer race really mm. in Abbey Wood, and it's just whether Alicia or Hannah can uh, can join her on the plane really. Okay, last day, day five. We've got there, everyone. Thank you for <laughs> sticking with us. <laughs> we can we've talk something into, all day long. It's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> we've, we've gone into full detail here. Just a reminder before we go into day five is we will be live streaming our live reactions and alternative commentary throughout the whole of British trials. And that includes the para swimming that's happening this week. 
mm-hmm. we want to give another voice to British swimming and give our knowledge and experience to it because obviously me and Dan have studied all of the times we've studied tape we know a lot of these swimmers mm. it's it's kind of important that there's another voice shouting about British swimming other than just British swimming itself yeah I mean we we've spoke about it millions of times before where it seems like swimming isn't talked about on mm. the major platforms the BBC and etc but we want to be the voice on YouTube I suppose don't we yeah let's go um, for that Let's go for that. I yeah. like that. The, the voice of swimming YouTube, whatever you want to call it. But um, yeah, we want to kind of build up the profile of some of these swimmers because these swimmers could potentially be superstars. I mean, Adam Peaty, Duncan Scott, Jimmy, Jimmy Guy, they're already there. But we want to kind of help the other ones coming through mm. to build their profile as big as them, hopefully, which, yeah. would be, which would be great. Okay. So day five, and it kicks off with an absolute belter of a race. It's a monster race, isn't I it? I love absolute this. Absolute monster. I, I circled this one. No idea who wins. No idea. It's funny because I'll tell you what, I let's, mean, let's let's actually name the event as well. <laughs> <laughs> I've got oh, yeah. no idea who wins. It's the women's one hundred meters breaststroke, and there are six, seven, eight names that could very easily win this. Honestly, I've I've like I said, I've circled this one and even though people will just say, Oh well Molly Renshaw's gonna win because you know she's the form breaststroker, but hang on a minute, you've got some fantastic breaststroke swimmers behind her in mm-hmm. Caleb Van der Murder, Sarah Vasey, Imogen Clark, Jocelyn Hewlett, Katie Matz, even Cara Hanlon. Um it just it just could go anywhere here. I mean keep um, going, keep going. There's Abby Wood, there's Hannah Miley, there's so many names who have entered this. I can't wait to see who makes the final. Let's start with that. Who makes the final? And then the final, it could be a blanket finish across the whole field. That's difficult. I mean, I kind of want to ignore the qualification time because on paper, only Molly Renshaw is realistically going to make it. Um, But like I said on another race, if you get that victory or get that top two, that time might just automatically happen for you. Yeah. Um, and that, like I said, with uh, Jacob Peters on the hundred fly, if you get those little tiny details right, then it could be all the difference between and, you know point one, point two. And if you finish second in these hundred events, there's a possibility of a relay reserve for you. Absolutely, there's a lot on the line here. Mm. Um, and like you say, there's you know eight swimmers that could potentially win the race and then there's massive names in Lily Booker, Hannah Miley, Abby Wood on the sort of sidelines of this race which is incredible to say. I'm not even going to ask you who wins this. I'm just going to say to people tune in 7 o'clock Sunday the 18th of April and watch this race. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, because it's going to be a blanket finish. I don't know. I could don't. Let's just move on. I don't know. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> Let's just go. Let's just go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Next race, the men's two hundred meters backstroke, and this is an event where I think two guys are selected. I think if they don't slip on the blocks, Brody, I think mm. you're you're going. Yeah. I mean that the qualification times one fifty six six zero, of which Brody Williams and Luke Greenbank are. I wouldn't say comfortably under. Brody Williams is 0.4 under. I suppose that's kind of comfortable, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Luke Greenbank is more than fine. I think he's going. He's he's taking part in this race. Um, I just want Brody Williams to give not Luke slip. Greenbank a race. Yeah, not slip, of course, like he did. Um, and I think, yeah, we can quickly move on this because I think those two are both going to be going. Okay. I was going to throw out some wild predictions for this one. Oh, go on then. I think Luke Greenbank breaks his British record. Okay. Again, and Brody Williams goes at one fifty-five. Ooh, I do. Big swims on both of them then. because he slipped on the blocks and still finished fourth at Manchester, and he yep. was a good two second. He lost a good two seconds on that, and he still went what a one fifty-eight. I think I he's. I, I think he's in head. some very very good form that just got oh, missed he is. because of that slip. Yeah, oh, he's in very good form. Well, they both are. Um, both extremely strong at the underwater phases, which is key for backstroke. Um, and I'm not going to disagree with you. Luke Greenbank looks in fantastic form at the moment. Uh, 155 low would be... Or, well, it's already 155 low. A 155.2 or 1 is going to be a fantastic swim. Mm. And, then a, and then a PB for Brody Williams would be awesome. Um, so let's now move you. quickly on. We can, we can move on now. <laughs> <laughs> the women's 50 metres freestyle. Now, I don't think we need to spend as much time as we did on the men's. Anna Hopkins can go f- as fast as... 
the qualification time, I think I'll say it again, she's unlikely to at this meet. She'll likely get it later on in the season, but because she's going in in apostrophes, she's going in the mm. 100 meters freestyle, I would expect her to be the one who gets picked for this. And then I think she's the only one, Perfectly, if I'm perfectly honest. Well, the qualification time is actually 24.6. Yeah. So based off the time, she's over a 50. She's comfortably under it. Yeah, um, it's just whether she hits whether, that time. So whether she hits on. that time, yeah, like you say, is a different sort of story. Um, very similar to the Ben Proud situation, really. Mm-hmm. I think she'll be the only one going. Um, she might not hit the time in this meet, but I don't know, let's say European champs in May or Men Ostrom in June, I think she'll she'll be in by then. So yeah. I think she's she'll be on a plane, no problems. Traditionally, the Men Ostrom is usually very, very fast for 50s, given the oh, yeah, time very. of year it is. So that's when I'd expect yeah. the likes of Manadu and people like that to, and Showstrom will be coming back at that meet. I'd, I'd expect the 50 times to be exploding then rather than now. Yeah. All of the 50s and 100 swimmers likes Mare Nostrum. Yeah. Uh, Sarah Sosham, I, base, I think she basically did all her best races at Mare Nostrum. Yeah. Just the, the calendar, when it places itself on the calendar. So It's very nice. Yeah, I would, I would expect Anna Hopson to, to sort that out at that sort of time. Yeah. And then we finish day five. We finish British selection trials with the biggest race, arguably, in my memory, in my memory, the biggest race in british history at uh, british trials because this uh, is I'm, impossibly hard to pick from i'm not going to disagree with you this is a monster race um we're obviously we speak to matt richard's dad jimmy guy's dad on uh on twitter we spoke to tom the, dean we spoke to matt richard yeah. we spoke to joe litchfield the 200 meters oh, freestyle man. for the guys this is unreal I have never seen so many guys under a one fifth a one forty eight, and they've all gone under it this season. Yeah. Oh, God. <sighs> the four by two hundred relay is going to be incredibly fast for GB. I know Russia; mm-hmm. there was some wicked times coming out of there, but GB is yeah. going to have a really strong team, and then the individual selection. Well, Don't, I mean, God. if you if you go under one forty seven, you're underneath that qualification time. As of right now, three swimmers are underneath that qualification time. I'd Only expect more two to can go. swim. Um, I, yeah, I agree. I think more swimmers will go under that one forty seven. Uh, okay, so got, I think oh Duncan Scott goes because I th- he's he's in with a medal shout of the two hundred freestyle. After that, you have James Guy, Tom Dean, Callum Jarvis, Matt Richards, Joe Litchfield, Cameron Curl, Max Litchfield. And I mean, Jacob Whittle's all the way down in eighth slowest qualifier. Um, there's, yeah. there's names galore here, and it's really, really hard to pick who's going. I mean, I'm not going to try and... Oh, am I going to try and pull a prediction out of It's very difficult, back? you see. Because Jimmy Guy, he's gone a 145.9. Uh, I, I think he did that time when he won the World Champs yeah, in that was 2015. 2015. Now, that's five, six years ago now. Um, if he can sort of bring that form back again, mm-hmm. then perfect. I mean, he's going. Um, I, For me, I would say Jimmy Guy is guaranteed to be on the relay. I think five or six can go on the relay because Duncan Scott's going to be swimming a few events. He's not going to be doing the heat. The heat. Yeah, I so mean, if you I come think fifth, I, I, it's not the worst thing in the world. I still stand by that we've got a very good chance of winning this gold at Tokyo. We'll, 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 with we'll this get team. to that. We'll get to that in um, the preview podcast. So difficult. I mean, like you say, I think Duncan Scott's going because he is the standout 200 freestyler, not just in Britain but the world actually at the moment mm. because he's he's really he's swimming really well. Tom Dean, oh my God, honestly, it's so difficult. It's so difficult. I think Matt Richards, for me, I would target the 100 if I'm Matt Richards. But at the same time, if you've got an opportunity to get on the relay team for this mm. 4x2, you take it. Um, Joe Litchfield surprised me with a 147.6. I didn't think, I didn't know he could go that fast. Mm. Um, but he's in with a shout. Okay. Blimey. Little wager. Oh, you want it? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Pick the second place person after Duncan Scott. What, what do you want the wager to be? Oh, God. What do you want the wager to be? No when idea. pools are back open, we have to do 750s. The loser does 750s. 
Uh, okay, how about we both do 750s? Uh, sorry, wait, we're going to do that set anyway. Yeah. The winner does 750s, the loser does 950s. Oh, God. Okay, yeah. fine. Do you want to do that? Yeah. All right, so who do you... I'm, I'm going to go first. I think Tom Dean oh. joins Duncan Scott. <laughs> Can I just say I want to say Tom Dean as well? <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, I, I'm just going. Uh, I'm going off form. Yeah, um, no, that's that's okay. So both our thinking is Duncan Scott and Tom Dean, but it, for the purpose of the wager, I will go Jimmy Guy. Okay. Although um, I'm not excited about swimming nine fifties. <laughs> well, you just don't know. Jimmy Guy is a fierce competitor. Uh, I, I'd hate to bet against him. Uh, just I'm just did. going off form. I'm just going off form. Uh, I think Tom Dean is the a, a swimmer who's more in form than Jimmy Guy. That's literally yeah. the only thinking I've got. I mean, that was my logic. A little bit more, of my yeah. logic was he's only racing the 400 free before this. Yep, he's that's gonna be true. fresher. But okay, well, that is that's a fun way to end the trials. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh God, I'm going to be more nervous than the people racing. <laughs> Okay, so that is... nervous parents, isn't it? Yeah. That is our preview of the British selection trials. In a nutshell, we've tried to go through each event as fast as possible, giving you the selection times people have to hit and who's likely to get selected or win the event in the case that they don't hit the selection time. Mm -hmm. We, like I said before, we are going to be live streaming during the finals on YouTube. We'll link it everywhere in our social medias. But for this podcast, this extravaganza, we are not done. No, we're not. We're if, not. If, in, a, in a kind of weird way, we're only halfway, I suppose. Um, we're not going to go into as much detail, I don't think, on this parasite. But um, we've got no. to talk the para. We've got to talk para, of course. We do. There is a big para meet happening in Sheffield from the eighth of April till the eleventh of April. I believe yep. this is kind of their selection trials, but not written in stone so much. It's not called selection meet. No, I think it's um, very similar to the British able body trials where this would be the first chance to qualify, I think. Yeah. There are so, there are other meets as well afterwards if swimmers are or the slots aren't picked, you know. Yeah, so what we'll do for the preview of this meet because we're live streaming during this as well, which is going to mm-hmm. be happening the evening this podcast goes live. Yeah. yeah. What we'll do is we'll pick out some names some events for people to pay attention to. Now, we've spoken to a few parents of the para swimmers. We've been clued up on para swimming because Mm. when you look on paper, there's some really weird event programming. For example, there is, I believe it's a 100 breaststroke and then it's followed by a 200 breaststroke, which from an able body point of view, you would think, why on earth are those events stacked next to each other? Because usually you would swim 100 breaststroke and 200 breaststroke. That's in your arsenal. Yes. But yeah. what happens on a parasite is not every event that you would think is available to every category or classification. That's right. So the people who are swimming the 100 meters breaststroke, that's because that's an Olympic event for their classification and they don't have the 200 meters breaststroke as an Olympic event for their classification. It gets a little bit messy, but what I suggest is you follow along with us on the live streams and we'll explain it as it goes along. Yes, correct. Uh, We do have a special guest joining us as well who will help us explain it as well. Um, hopefully, of course, yeah, we need to double check that, don't we? Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, it's not as, um, it's more complicated on a para side because of the different classifications and stuff. But, yeah. uh, yes, like Scott says, we're going to, we'll talk about it more on the live streams, which when this podcast goes out would be later on, believe it or not. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll pick out my names to pay attention to the ones that are really standing out to me as I'm excited to see what they do. Yep. So. The first name is Alice Tai. She's back in the water for the first time this season. I believe, if I remember correctly, she is world champion and I think world record holder in several events. She's definitely British record holder in the S8 Mm -hmm. categories. Now, it's going to be really exciting to see what she does, given that she's back in the water for the first time this season. And if you actually look at the start list, she is the fastest name on paper in a lot of these events. Yeah, um... I actually haven't seen Alice race too much, to be honest with you. 
but I know that she is extremely quick in, in her classification. Um, so really looking forward to her swim, actually. Um, another one who I haven't seen race for ages, actually, it seems, is Ollie Hind. Mm, um, he's back. He's back. Um, of course, he's a world record holder in, um, well, he was in S7 once upon a time, wasn't he? He's now been changed to the S8 category. He's been reclassified, so um, a little bit harder for him, I suppose. New mm. world records to get. Um but it would be great to just to see him swim, see how he's getting on um, and how he does in uh, the new classification. Yeah, and then other names that stand out from the Manchester meets who have been PBing and swimming really well. Ellie Chalice, Scott yep. Quinn, yep. Rhys Dunn. Jordan Catchpole, he's been doing well in the 50s and the 100s. Um, you said Rhys Davis, didn't you? Maisie Summers Newson. There's a handful of swimmers Eddie actually. Simmons. Yeah, Zara Maluli. We could list loads here. There's tons. <laughs> going to go through I the bas- whole lot. There's loads. Basically, what I would say is this meet, there's a lot more international swimmers than mm. me and Dan expected. Yes, there is. And if, on the British point of view, all the swimmers that are swimming are top quality swimmers. They are very high standard. When you look at the world of para swimming, GB para swimming is actually miles ahead of GB swimming. GB able body swimming, yes, yeah, it in is. Terms I mean, of it's, performance. it's miles ahead. Yeah, I mean, we've got multiple Paralympic champions taking part. Ellie Summons, uh, Ollie Hines, uh, the ones uh, top of the shop, I suppose. Stephen Clegg. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that was, you could list loads. British records all over the place um, and international medals all over the place as well. Um, Abby Kane is another name uh, I keep forgetting as well. Um, just uh, swimmers all over the place. And um, I'm going to have a good look. I'm going to have loaded up the um, the British records for each event because I do think we've got a great chance of breaking some of those records. We do. Um, we saw them. We saw quite a few of them over the, the course of the two Manchester meets. Yeah, um, a lot and of I just I S14. think four of them are going to go. A lot yes, of S14 yeah. times tumbled, really. Okay, so if I was to pick out a few events for people to really, really focus in on. I would go with the men's 100 meters breaststroke where Scott Quinn is racing as SB14. He's well ahead of the field. And when it came to Manchester, he was even racing in the able body finals. He's that he good. I would definitely mm-hmm. pay attention to him. And then we also have a massive selection of British swimmers after him. I would pay attention to the men's 100 meters freestyle because, again, that one is going to be likely an all British final, and there's some really fast swimmers in there. The men's 100 meters backstroke for Jordan Catchpole and Reese Dunn that's going to be a really fun head to head because they both have traded the British record over the past few months, if I remember correctly. Uh, yes, I believe uh, Reese Davis is the world record holder for that 100 backstroke, actually. Mm. Um, and so then. Tossing it- And then the women's 400 metres freestyle, because if you look at the names in that one, it is just stacked full of stars. You've got Zara Maluli, Tony Shaw, Katie Crowhurst, Eleanor Simmons, Maisie Summers-Newton, Grace Harvey. There is so many big names of British swimming in that race that everyone needs to see, basically. There's a few British record holders in that 400 Mm. free as well, so potentially we could see two or three of those British records go just in that one race. Um, so yeah, that would be, that's my circled event for the para swimming is the women's 400 free. That would be, that's a real yeah. standout race. Okay. So we've previewed a lot of swimming and it's fair to say next week there won't be a podcast because me and Dan are going to be very busy live streaming, giving everyone our live reactions, speaking to swimmers who are racing. We're doing the works. This is a very busy two weeks for us. But we can't wait. Yep. Oh, I'm so excited about it. Um, I, I just like the idea of seeing racing again. It feels like it's been a, such a long month since the last time we did some live streams. Um, so really looking forward to it. There's going to be some outstanding swims. Um, and it just, I don't know where to begin. It's just every day there is something to look forward to. So definitely tune in. Yeah, so our YouTube channel is linked in the description of this podcast, as it is always. For the next two weeks, if you head over there, basically any evening you will find us live streaming because there's going to be racing on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be constant for us. We're going to be very busy. We're going to be very tired at the end, but it's going to be very worth it. Okay. So I think I'm going to end this podcast by saying good luck to every swimmer who is competing over the next few weeks. You should feel very privileged that you are the few who are racing at British Trials over the next week. 
there's a lot of swimmers who would love to be there competing themselves and just enjoy it enjoy racing again and yeah. enjoy yeah. racing on such a big competitive environment because honestly six months ago no one thought this would actually be possible no i mean they've done so well over the last two manchester meets haven't they mm. um and now they are basically doing the same sort of thing again with more summers and it's just going to keep on growing as the year goes on but this is this is the big time for some of these summers tokyo olympics is is just around the corner um and there's lots of places up for grabs so very best of luck to all of those summers um and I, I can't wait for it. I really can't wait. <laughs> Hopefully we see some fast times like we have seen worldwide so far this month. Yes, yeah. There's a lot of, uh, I don't want to compare, but uh, other countries are doing very well at the moment. Yep. So hopefully we've, we've got to step up too. And I, I believe we will. Okay. Well, that rounds up this week's very long podcast from me and Dan, but very mm. worthwhile one. I hope everyone has tuned in for the duration of it. If you haven't subscribed to us already, please do so on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, all the usual podcast providing platforms. I've been your host, Scott. He's been Dan, and I will catch you on our live stream. You've been listening to the Propulsion Swimming Podcast with Scott and Dan. We want to thank you for joining us and invite you to subscribe to the show as well as checking out the Propulsion Swimming YouTube channel for weekly tutorials and videos to get your swimming fix. We will be back next week. Until then, we'll catch you on the next one.